I am Alejandro. I was born in San Juan, Puerto Rico, uh, what you call Puerto Rico, which uh, is the land of the Taino people. It is uh, Borinque, and that's the name that we, our ancestor gave it to the land. I came here uh, to Saskatoon in 2001, so that means that I've been around for 20 years. I've been doing art for more than 30 years. I I'm a visual artist by profession, and I'm also the arts and culture consultant for the city of Saskatoon. When I was in Puerto Rico as a child, I was a very curious kid. I grew up in a, in a, in a place that was an inner, inner city location, that there was a lot of crime, there was a lot of uh, urban, urban sprout. And I always found myself going to the to nature and going to the trees and getting away of the noise, getting away of the of the chaotic life that you live in in a city. So I started to discover things like art, and and my mother was a journalist. She was very influential in my life, and she always tried to keep us <laughs> all the kids. I have other siblings as well, an older sister and another brother and my younger sister and then so then we were always uh, together but they she have a curiosity to put us uh, into art school and then we went and did art since a very young age so i found that uh, in that chaotic space that i grew up with i found that uh, going to nature and with a sketchbook it was something that didn't cost a lot of money i grew up in a place that it was a, a, a core neighborhood where there's uh, not a lot of resources. We were a big family, and 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 that was an opportunity for me to get away of all the problems and all the all the things that were around that at times could be difficult for children. So my mom had the vision to to get us involved in arts at a very young age, and and I just kept doing it. I was good at it. I really loved it. Until today, I that's probably one of my favorite things to do beside. Uh, preserving horses, a uh, breed, breed of horses from Puerto Rico that I've been breeding for more than 30 years as well. We have a very speci special horse of breeds that probably is the oldest uh, breed in, in, in America because uh, it was developed in Puerto Rico and it's called the Paso Fino breed. Paso Finos are horses that have a fine step, a fine gait that when they don't trot, they glide and they're very smooth right so they're at one point in in the 19th century when there was no car they were very popular so then from puerto rico we spread that breed all over and people started generating their own and creating their own breed so with the urban sprout in puerto rico the land was uh, taken uh, the agricultural land that the farmland that was used for breeding these horses the space that they need was taken for building homes for people so they were still display. So we are trying now to preserve the breed with the 2,500 horses that are alive, uh, that are purebred. When I came here, I, I, I never understood the difference until I came here. So uh, what is good about moving and shifting from spaces is that you have to reinvent yourself and regenerate and create a new language. Uh, as an artist, is the language of, of, of art. As a person, I have to learn a different language. I knew basics of English, but I was not proficient on it when I moved here. So it took me a few years to adjust to the innuendo, to the cultural uh, uh, ways of people to, to communicate. So for me, uh, as my art was a tool to get together with people, to connect with people, to see the landscape with my own colors. So then it was an opportunity for me to express what I see, what, I, what is around me in, in, in the language, bringing the information that I, that I have uh, from my culture. My culture is, uh, there's a lot of sound, there's a lot of noise, it's very touchy-touchy, it's chaotic. So some of my paintings and some of my work is like that. It, is, it has a lot of uh, layers, it has a lot of things to it. So I'm trying to, and I'm in a process now to edit all that because I've been here 20 years. So also living here influenced my, my work. Right now I have a work in Puerto Rico in, a, in an exhibition 
that is uh, about precisely that, the Paso Fino horses, and it's a big landscape, which was inspired by the land that I live, but also I use the colors of, of Puerto Rico and I use the colors of, of, of the horses, and the horses are part of it. So uh, it, I'm in the process now to integrate my passion for horses into my art. Uh, I do projects usually that have to do with social justice, uh, environmental sustainability is one of those things. Preservation of a breed that is endangered is one of those things of, that creates social justice. My work all the time talks about identity, my own and the identity of others. And, and in that process I try to see the connectors. What connects my identity as a tree? What are my roots? What are my branches? What are my fruits? and all that keeps incorporating and interconnecting. And those are the layers that get created. So then why that tree have two colors? Why not three, right? But when you start looking at it in depth, you see that there's more than three colors. There's more than five colors. There's shades, there's, and depending on the time of the day, that, that tree will change. So I try to apply that in my work that I do. My inspiration in Puerto Rico came mostly from horses. I've been drawing horses and painting horses for a long time because of the same affinity that I have to, to the animal. Uh, horses mean freedom to me. It's a, it's, it's, it, it means also collaboration because a horse won't allow you to ride them unless they want to. So they need to be a relationship. So uh, I found my inspiration in relationship with my surroundings in Puerto Rico. It hasn't shifted here. It's about relationships as well. It's about identity. You need to create your own community. Who are the people that you connect? Who are the people that have the same values? And you get to notice that it doesn't matter your color of skin or, or your economics. You resonate with people that uh, connect with you on a very deep level. It might be emotional, it might be intimate, or it might be just as a friend. And I think that's what motivates me and inspires me to do my work. Those relationships, those connections, as I explained, the relationship between the tree and the land, the relationship between the tree and the, and the, and the birds, the relationship between the tree and the, and the soil and the grass, and we are all interconnected. So to me, the most important thing is respecting those identities, connect, and, and be together. We are here to work together and only we can do it if everybody is content with what they do, no matter what it is. Just do it with love and do it with your heart and, and be happy to be alive because this period of time means nothing with this big scheme of things. Life continues when we're gone. So just make the best of it at, the, at this time. We don't have any other.